So we're out at the Sportsman's Expo in Denver, Colorado today uh, to take a walk around. So far we're at High Country 4x4, which is kind of cool. Uh, they've got a lot of cool stuff over here, uh, including an old Jeep, uh, I think it's Comanche is what they were. Uh, you can see it over there. We'll catch it in a little while, um, but we're going to walk around for right now. We're gonna do the things that we like, which is probably look at this camper. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, look at the awning on it. It goes all the way around. Yeah, it's like a 180 awning. It's cool. That's pretty slick. Yeah. And it's got a outdoor kitchen. Pantry. <laughs> and pantry. It's kind of nice the pantry's pass through. Yeah. And Dometic. Oh no, it's a Truma. It has a speaker, outdoor speakers in it. Yeah. yeah. It's a little entertainment center. These are neat. I've seen these a few times on the outdoor rigs. So Emily was pointing out this little table here. Oh, it's got. <laughs> Does it have a wet bath or just a shower? I'm going to go ask. Do y'all mind if we go in to take a look around? I didn't want to. I didn't want to presume it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm probably okay. I'm pretty short. <laughs> so this is actually pretty slick. It's a lot like our our base camp in that, um, except for you really have like you have seating. Um, so like I'm gonna let Emily's gonna grab the camera, but like. Your bed's kind of in the back, which is a lot like our uh, our base camp, camp was, but instead of the bed and then bathroom and then kitchen, they put the kitchen outside, so you've got somewhere to sit. You've still got your bed and then a wet bath off to the side. And the top does pop up, so it gives you the extra room. So whenever you're traveling, you kind of have a little bit more sleekless, and they have an AC, which is nice. This is slick. I like the, I, and I like the skylights right above the bed. Mm -hmm. So the wet bath, um, this is a lot in like truck campers. It's got the shower waterproof toilet. shower toilet vent to the outside. So not a ton of space, but enough to get in and, and shower off. And then this is the pass through pantry that we were showing from the outside so you can see the same bag of potato chips and um, it's netting to keep everything in and then this is all your control your control panel for everything so i'm gonna have to look that up garmin operations navigation system mm -hmm. i kind of i just want to see what it what it i don't want to play with it in here cause, but I'll, obviously the lights are controlled here cabin temp fresh water Oh, so it's it's essentially just your it's your readouts for like how much water you have, where your battery's at, gray water. So it doesn't. So you must not have a, a separate black tank. Right. That's slick. Okay. Boreas campers. I think someone wants to come in. Yep. Hi. Hi, bud. If you let us out, we'll let you in. So you can add 400 watts of solar, dryer, cassette toilet, furnace, Truma. it's a Truma water heater and furnace. Six foot six inches, I was comfortable in there. And it's seven, a little over seven feet, edge to edge. It's not bad though, it's like a cool like, kind of overland. Yeah, it's kind of a cool like overland type trailer. This one is equipped with the optional luggage rack above the toolbox. Okay. But, or you can put two more bikes up there on two bike trails. So you can do one down at the bottom here and two up top? Yeah, so you can carry three very easily. And then you've just got storage here. Yeah, that's all storage uh, all the way through. You've got onboard air. So suspension, mm -hmm. it's Cruise Master out of Australia. So it's onboard air, auto level. Um, you can adjust it depending on if you're road or highway 
or off-road. Then we got a chuck there so you can uh, air down tires and breathe. Yeah. Freedom. Nice. And it's got the cruise map hitch as well, so multi bug axis hitch coupler here. <laughs> and we've got okay. the trailer and the vehicle to articulate separately. Got it. Um, and also, if you're really off roading with it, a two inch standard ball mm -hmm. could pop off. Yep. And where, so, where are you guys built? Uh, down in Pueblo. Okay. Where are you guys out of? We Aurora. live just in Aurora right now. We've yeah. been all we've we've lived all over the country, <laughs> um, but we're down in Aurora right now. Yeah, we've got we've got a handful of full timers. Yeah. I, that's slick. Yeah. Uh, I like a really good use of space. I I like the way you, you yeah. put it together. Yeah, so it packs a lot in a very small package. That's great. But still, you know, top comes down, so it's low profile towing in and trail. Yeah. So coming up on a a toppers, um, one of our kind of bigger videos, most watched, is uh, about our truck topper. So they've got, looks like a single truck out here. It's got the uh, deck system in it, kind of Lear topper so they've got the flip up sides which are really cool they've kind of built in looks like they've built in all the options to this one this is a slider too yep so they built in the flip down on the front we've got the deck system in it and wired lights they've got their Yakima, I would assume that's a Yakima, yeah. Yakima rack up top. <clears throat> so then they've got a couple of truck bed covers here. Uh, looks like a backflip, uh, which I had a backflip on a truck a long time ago, which is really cool. Um, Low Max, I have not heard of, but it looks like they're doing like a, a little bit more textured on it. That deck system is pretty cool. I think that Lear cap looks pretty good. I do like what we got, but that Lear cap's pretty cool. Emily's looking at light bars. We already have lights in ours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's in, you can move it around, so it's kind of nice. You can not just have it inside. Yeah. They have one up there. What's on that? The, on the window. Oh, on the back side. Yeah, they have one mounted. Get in there real quick. So this is the light bar Emily's talking about. Okay. Um, this this here turn touch on and off. Uh -huh. When you touch and hold, it dims. Yeah. Okay. And then when and then when you turn it on and off, it remembers that that setting. And then when you hold it again, it'll dim in the opposite direction. Cool. And get really low. And when it gets lower, that means you're using less power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, it lasts a little bit longer than, in, I mean, yeah, you only have 1.4 amp draw. So then... Nearly indestructible light, but waterproof, vibration resistant, smash it with a hammer, run it over with a car. <laughs> That's what got me. I can do that. <laughs> you, I mean, you know, you're hitting a washboard road at 40 miles per hour, having some fun, things yeah. bouncing around in the back, and they smash the light. Yeah. It's going to work at night when you get when you get to camp. I just, so it's, it's slick that you've, you've got to come up with, I've never seen it mounted back here before. Um, so we've got our topper and we're mounted across the top. That's what I've done for um, yep. Yeah, so we run them long ways on the ceiling to give optimal light inside the cab. Um, but this, this is, we developed this actually for our own use a few years ago mm -hmm. because we wanted overhead light yep. in our working area. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit of a game changer and what's special when I saw yeah. this. They just came out. Aircraft yeah. aluminum. It's, uh, it's got a, we call it a V series because it has a triangular shape to it. Oh. Virtually cannot crush in that shape. And and then, when we were in New Mexico and they didn't have any lights, that would have been very nice at night. <laughs> <laughs> LED diodes are running and they're 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 filled in with silicone, so they're waterproofed. And then we have this nice diffuser here to like make sure none of those diodes blast you in the eye like a lot of cheap LEDs do. <laughs> All cheap LEDs? <laughs> you said some. <laughs> yeah, we're not, you're not seeing much diffused light out there right now. Not slick. So I've, I've got a, an ARE Overland topper. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, you 
can essentially mount these to anything. We've got uh, pre-drilled screw holes for size six and eight screws, but the best application is double-sided 3M extreme tape. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have we at the house. <laughs> if you put that double-sided tape on correctly with a little bit of heat, it's not coming off. And you're just jumping straight off the the wiring for the the lights and everything, or how does it? I think this is hard wired. Yeah. Hard wired. Yeah. Hardwire to the battery. We run them to our aux batteries because we have dual battery systems in our trucks. Yeah. But a lot of people, you can wire them right into your starter battery, mm -hmm. and it pulls such little inner, uh, electricity that you don't really have to worry about your battery dying. Right. Obviously, you want to turn it off when you can, so you don't yeah. wake up in the morning with a dead battery. But and you like, guys have been around for how long? You said you we just, just started. We just launched in July. Yeah. Okay. We oh, developed congrats. the product about three <laughs> years ago. Uh, my partner and I started the business together. We both went through a little ups and downs together, and then uh, we. Got, we fully launched the brand in July. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So we're love if you guys can like and share. And I was gonna say I might be, us. I might be stopping by anyway uh, yeah, to A and A because yeah. I, I almost want to replace the. I've got the single strip down the center of mine, yeah. which is great. It it works, um, but it's it's just bulbs, right? It's just the light, and so with this, it's with it being diffused, it's actually gonna spread it out more and get yeah. you a dimmer light. light. Yeah. Too. yeah. And it's great because we like to use them. At, night camping and so we put that light really low we can have enough light to cook and all that but when we step away we can still see the stars and we still you know we still see what we're out there to be a part of so we got to talk to the owner of uh, kingpin um so we'll, we'll show you the light um what's really cool about that system is these guys they said they developed it over the course of a couple of years and just launched it in july and they're out at 40 dealers now uh through the u.s so a and is, is kind of that local dealer in Denver. That's Broadway and Bellevue-ish. Um, and then there's one up in Westminster, I heard. But uh, that was pretty slick. I, yeah. I may even look at replacing the light in my topper uh, with something like that. Outdoor beards, that's funny. <laughs> Ooh, they've got beard cream. Yeah. How's it going? I thought it was just t-shirts and stuff. I thought that was hysterical, but this is even better. <laughs> All the beard stuff, you know? Plus some lip balm, mustache wax, get a beard and body soap. What do you guys use? Is it coconut oil? Is it? Uh, it's a bunch of stuff. We've got coconut oil, uh, beeswax, cocoa butter, shea butter. We've got a few different oils in there. So you've got like your jojoba, your argan, grapeseed, avocado. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> I won't. Um, sweet almond oil, that's one I'm missing. Okay. Um, sweet almond oil. I prefer beard balm over beard oil. Uh huh. Because yes. the beard oils, you're missing out on those solid ingredients. Like mm -hmm. cocoa, coconut, coconut oil, shea butter, cocoa butter. You can't put those in an oil, so you're kind of missing out on some of the best stuff. I'll tell you what, the drive down here was treacherous. Would you come 70 or 80? 80 across oh, Wyoming? Yeah. It was like an 80 mile wide up. Uh -huh. Yeah. I couldn't see more than 60 feet. Yeah. I was so scared. Okay. It was like, I had a semi pass me and he disappeared after about 60 yep. feet. And so I sped up and I was like, I'm just gonna stay on his tail. Because uh -huh. he's been doing this forever. He knows what he's doing. He's going 65, speed limit's 45. So screw it, whatever. <laughs> so I just stayed within like 30 feet of him for 80 miles. That's the only reason I made it out of that place. It's the only way to see. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You can't pull over. Like, no. You pull over, you're, gonna you're done. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cause I want to pick up something. Is that the one you like the best? I think so. I like that one a lot too. Yeah. They all smell good. So what's the what's the scent on the on the uh, summertime? Oh, that one's hard to describe. So it's one of the scents we use in there is called an amber. Uh huh. And amber is like it's kind of got this sweet earthiness mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, but then there's also like a little bit of just like a vanilla. Okay. So that one's, it's the hardest one for me to describe. <laughs> the other ones, I could give it to you straight. The summertime one, it's just tough. So I'm somewhere between the summertime and the under the stars. Oh yeah, you like the sweeter ones? That one's a eucalyptus and grapefruit. It'll clear your sinuses if you have a cold. I've got a YouTube channel too, so we took that. Is it, is it linked to Outdoor Beards? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'm going to check it out. It's not really beard related. Okay. It's okay. Like my personal. Oh. No, that's good. I use it as my creative outlet. Yeah. You know, so like. I do project stuff like I did a paper patio and paper edging. And yeah. I'm Very cool. On a, uh, I built an arbor with a porch swing in it. So I'm going to help you on that. Moves and arrows. I present to you Olive.
<laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Should have brought Olive with us. Taking a look at cheese. They are very nice. Bamboo is hypoallergenic. Dust mites won't live in it. Machine washable, really comfortable. Uh, bamboo grows feet per day, so very renewable resource. Yeah. So it keeps you cool. Yeah. yeah. So this is 60% bamboo. Put your hand in there, feel the temperature. Oh, that's Say nice. for the camera, is it cool? It's very cool. It's very cool. It's, it's very cooling. 60% bamboo. Yeah. This is. Put your hand in there. Oh. This is 100% bamboo. Put your hand in there and smile for the oh camera. Oh my! I like All right, this is so. This is a company called Wahoo Bamboo. Uh, those are. For bad, uh. Yeah. So then I, on the pillows, mm -hmm. the, the, they all have a bamboo cover. Okay. Just like, and then this has a down fill, oh, so it's okay, synthetic, so. synthetic down, so it feels like. A down pillow, but there's no allergies, no quills to cope with. So that's what I was calling out. Is that every once in a while you get the uh, you get the duck calls. And it gets pretty loud. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> This is one of the vendors we were talking about. Yes. So I did a couple years ago. Um, I bought like a little. It was like a starter kit from you guys. So it was a little tin that had like a little yeah. bit of tinder in it. Yeah, the whole tin like this. Yeah. We switched from cans to bags. I see that. Yeah. Because the cans got in shipping were getting damaged, uh -huh. and then we're able to actually because of the flew into a bag, it's lighter weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're actually act, to increase the amount of fire starter we're able to ship. Yeah. We went to a full two ounces. In a bag. No, I was gonna grab some for for our and trips this the, summer. What's the different blends? Like this says summer blend, yep. spring. So most fire starters on the market just make what we call our fall spring, and mm -hmm. and it's mainly just used for camping mm -hmm. conditions, like you know, 50s to 70, 80 degrees when most people are out, right? So most fire starter markets are just that. But in the hunting industry and still with snow, backcountry skiing, snowmobiling. They're down in the lower temperatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's frozen when they go to use it and they can't process it to light it. So we make it for extreme cold weather. Okay. And we make it for desert climates for extreme hot weather. Okay. So we've actually we manufactured and designed our own lighters. We actually made a storage department for the fire starter actually in it. That's cool. Mine does not have that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's because we manufacture it so nobody else can rip it off. <laughs> right? So that there, and then our strikers, mm -hmm. we actually make them, and they're like, why do they have such a big handle? And we actually make them, they have a storage compartment in them, mm -hmm. oh, and cool. then they push out like a push pop. Okay. That's slick. So that you have everything you need to light a fire all in one unit. And this is a bigger one that you would throw in a vehicle, mm -hmm. or, a, or a TV or something, or a snowmobile. You have everything you need to light a fire that stays in there, and you're ready to go if in case of emergency. And then this is a pocket billow. So it's got a rod that comes out the back, and then it extends so you can blow in the fire. Oh my. Oh. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> so you're not inhaling the smoke mm -hmm. yeah. and yep. all of that. Fire Buddy is adaptive to the environment. So because it's wet, it, it increases the burn time. So as your conditions get worse, it increases the burn time of it. So that's going to burn even longer because it's damp and wet.
eight years old. Oh wow! So they're same age yes, as the. Yes, yes, the uh, gray horn. Yes. Yeah. So does she like? Why was she rescued, or oh, why did she come? Sorry, you can hear the okay. story. I uh, know. I'm sorry. She was stolen from the nest. Oh. There is nothing wrong with her. She was actually stolen from the nest in the Rawlins area of Wyoming. Okay. Um, 2015. We're guessing that she was between two and four weeks old. And uh, she was kept just long enough to ruin her life. <laughs> By July, the novelty had worn off, and she was dumped at the Seminole West Forest State Park. Okay. Between Rollins and Sinclair, North of I-80. So Wyoming gave a fish gets a call that, the, you know, it, there's a first-year bald eagle, you know, at such and such campground, hanging out. And, right. Um, I mean, it's kind of a long, interesting story. I mean, it has just been definitively mm -hmm. proven she that can't she survive. can't survive. And the big thing is, is when she gets hungry, she goes and hangs around people. <laughs> kind of hoping to be fed. The last time she was picked up was at a dude ranch north of Saratoga. We've only ever seen them in Washington, right? We saw a lot in Washington. Washington State? We yeah. were right off Puget, Bay, uh, oh, okay. Puget Sound. Yeah. Right, yeah. So we'd see them kind of circle and have nests and stuff yep, like that, but yep. never, never, obviously well, never this close. But between 15 and 1,800 bald eagles that, that winter in Colorado. Oh, really? Yeah, they really start showing up in earnest in November, a little bit after Halloween. And the stubble adults, at least, that don't have a breeding territory to get back to, they, they're around until, you know, March or so, March or April. You can't pet wild animals, but I kind of wanted to pet it. <laughs> that was way cool. That was pretty neat, getting the, the story on that. Yeah. Bald eagle. The Colorado Parks and Wildlife really did it up. They even have a little place to go fishing. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of kids fishing over here. The bar's got a pretty long line. We had a great day at the Sportsman's Expo in Denver, Colorado. We only highlighted four or five vendors, but we stopped with probably five to ten. Even with the four or five vendors we highlighted, we didn't buy something from all of them, but we did make a couple of small purchases. The first was from Pyro Putty. Um, so these are actually really nice for starting fires like campfires and, and for cooking. Um, because they light very quickly. It's almost like a lighter fluid, but it's also got some tinder in it. I've used these in the past, and so that made a really good choice for us. The other thing we bought from Pyro Putty was the striker. Um, so this is kind of nice because it doesn't require batteries like my other uh, electric lighter does. Probably where we spent the most amount of time today was with outdoor beards. We talked to Matt for quite a while, long time, you can see in the video, we actually talked to him about his YouTube channel and we got home and subscribed immediately because he's got some interesting stuff to do. We did buy from him uh, some beard balm. Uh, so I chose the Under the Stars. So earlier you saw me making a decision. This is the one I made the call on. Uh, I just like the scent of this one the best, but all five of them were pretty good. Emily enjoyed all of them and liked the, I think it was called Grandpa's Pipe, uh, the best. I also bought a new beard brush from them, uh, which mine is probably five or six years old. It still does okay, but having an extra won't hurt. Other than that, we were pretty impressed with how Colorado Parks and Wildlife set up. They probably took up two full rows, including having a, an actual fishing pond, a stocked fishing pond, which was kind of neat. The Sportsman's Expo is a traveling expo, so definitely stop in if it's coming near you. And if you have time, stop in and talk to Matt at Outdoor Beards. Other than that, we had a great time. We hope you got something out of this, and thanks for watching. You want to say hi to YouTube? Hi. <laughs> <laughs>